If you use Philope Forms or another form software, you won't want to miss this. Philope has just released their new feature, Workflows. It allows you to add automation directly to your forms. It's like a mini Zapier, Make, or Relay.app built right in. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our website, innerdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. If you do not have an account already, there is a link in the description below to get started. Fellow Workflows is still in beta. However, they do have a brief description on their website on what you can accomplish with this new feature. Basically, their introduction is forms meet workflows, which as mentioned is similar to a Zapier, Make, or Relay.app. Essentially, it allows you to add in automations and different triggers and actions throughout that form submission. It's not going to replace any of those tools that I just mentioned. However, it is nice that you're able to build in some of those automations and functionality right into your form. I'll jump into Dominic's LinkedIn post. There's a few things to go through and the workflows, they can trigger on a form submitted, form abandonment. If someone starts to complete the form and then leaves, if they've entered their email address, then you'll be able to potentially recover that lead or that person that's filling out the form. Some of these features are required to be paid for, but it all depends on what you're looking for. Scheduling event canceled, event rescheduled, and before event starts. That one, it's going to allow you to send out an automated reminder email before that event actually starts, whether it's 30 minutes, an hour, or a day before, something along those lines. And the features or the actions that can happen after that trigger, as mentioned, here's a run AI action using the OpenAI API. And here's a few of the features that are available within that. Summarize, classify, generate, and extract. Summarize, pretty self-explanatory. Generate, pretty self-explanatory. And extract, that's just extracting specific information from the form submission. And then classify, what this one will allow you to do depending on your use case it will allow you to classify the form or the type of information being submitted. We've got a delay, send custom emails. We have a filter option, which basically allows the workflow to take a look at what was submitted within the form and then decide if it wants to continue. The branching, that is not yet released, but eventually you'll be able to have some sort of logic in your form to decide which route you want to go down. Send a Slack message, Teams, Discord as well. You can send out a webhook. And soon you'll be able to connect directly to Zapier as well. Let's jump into the form and start building. To simplify things, I've just created a simple form to uh, speed up this process a little bit. It's just going to be a client inquiry form. The first page is going to be the contact information. We have full name, email address. These are both required as denoted by the little red asterisks. And then I've got company name and phone number. Those are optional. And then from there, when they click next, we can go into the request details. Again, I've got it really simple. I'm just asking for a budget and this is a drop down. And I just have a few options over here. Not sure, less than 1500 and then up to 5,000, 5,000 to 10,000 and more than 10,000. And then I also have an added description of your needs. I'm looking at this from my business perspective as a no code consultant. Once the customer is coming in or the client's coming in, I would like them to provide me with a brief description of their needs. I'm going to add in six rows here to make the space a little bit larger. And then again, like Philo always has provided, in this case, I'm not connecting it to any database, but you are able to connect it to SmartSuite, Airtable, Google Sheets, and other connections as well. Uh, I'm going to keep it really simple and just use the fill out interface and platform for this tutorial. And then the last page here, we should have an ending, which is a thank you once the form's been submitted. A couple of things I'm going to do, I'm going to add in a couple of pages, add some logic, and then we are going to create the workflow. First thing I want to do, go down here, we'll click add page and we will add a review page. We'll just leave this as review and it's already done set up for us. So that's fine. Now we're going to go in and add another page. We are going to use this scheduling option. 
And essentially it's like Calendly. I'm going to use Philout's own scheduling tool, which connects with Google Calendar. I'm going to select that, which is going to do one-on-one. -on -one, and I am going to just type in something like discovery call. Event duration, 30 minutes, that's fine. And we will add a Google Meet option. But there is other options that you can add in here as well. I'll hit create. It's going to build our scheduling page for us. And then down the left side here, we have a lot of different options. I'm just going to leave this as discovery call, event duration is 30 minutes, and the meeting location is Google Meet. So the general section is looked after, availability. I can go into here. I'm going to click on my working hours. And then from here, I can make any changes I want. For the tutorial, this is good enough. There's a limit future bookings option. I'm just going to do 21 days into the future a minimum notice. So you can change this users or people that are looking to book a call can only book four hours out or 10 hours out or 12 hours out at the earliest. I'm going to just set this to 12 hours. Basically they can't book same day. And then you can add a daily event limit. If you want, you can add in a buffer time before and after bookings. I'm going to add in maybe 15 minutes before. 15 minutes after is some sort of buffer in case you go over or you want to fill in a few notes after your call. And then I'm going to scroll down here and select display. So the way that this is displayed, I'm actually just going to leave it as is. I'm not too worried about it for this tutorial. And we can go into notifications here. I do want to turn on a reminder email. So I'll toggle that on and we can leave it as 30 minutes before. I might actually do one hour before. And we can go in here and edit the email. The email, we can just go in and do something like, this is a reminder for your scheduled meeting at, and then hit the at symbol. And you'll have this pop up where you can select some dynamic information. We'll just put in event start. Time. And then I'm going to hit this little plus icon. I'm going to bring in a button and the button text will just say open Google meet. We can make this dynamic as well. The URL is going to be the Google meet link. Add in a space, also add in some more text and put you can cancel or reschedule your meeting here and at symbol again. And I will just go down and click the reschedule or cancel URL. I'll hit done. And we have our reminder email set up. And we have general notifications. I'm going to click the edit button and it will take us to the settings page, which you can access yourself. I was on edit discovery call and I was down in notification. Essentially this button just takes you to settings and notifications. Well, you can receive an email yourself on every form submission. I'm not going to worry about this for now. This calendar invite notifications that's turned on by default and the respondent notifications. So send an email to the person who filled out your form upon submission. You can decide if you want to do that or not. For this tutorial, I'm not going to worry about it because we are going to build in something custom with a, a filter in the actual workflow. So we'll go back to edit and I can go down to advanced. And there's a few options here as well. It says book event. I'm going to do this on form submission. We could probably leave it as immediately in this case. However, there is a step that I'm not going to add. But for example, if you wanted to do on form submission, so they would select the time that they would like to meet with you. So let's say you're, you're selling some sort of service and they can book a call with you, but they have to pay. You could have on form submission. And then after this booking uh, page or scheduling page, you could have a page here that says payment only if the payment has been sent, will the booking actually get plot. So that's a use case for this feature here. The Google Calendar event title, this is what would be added to your Google Calendar and to the users or the person filling out the forms calendar. We could just do discovery call with your company name and maybe the person's full name. And then from here, that's all we need to do. And I can go into the logic. So the logic, what I actually want to do is after this request details, by default, I want it to go to the review page. And then from the review page, I actually want it to go directly to the ending unless certain conditions are met. I can disconnect that. I'm going to click here and drag directly across to ending. And then I'm going to click this plus icon. 
and drag to here. And it's going to set a condition. Once the review page has been completed, we can go to the discovery call if certain conditions are met. So we're going to add a condition. We're going to go down to the budget. And if the budget equals 5,000 to 10,000 and sorry, or if the budget equals more than 10,000. What we're doing here is we're allowing the person submitting the form to book a discovery call with us directly on our calendar if they meet a certain condition. If not, we're going to take them down a different workflow that sends them an email with some extra information so that they can make a more educated decision if they want to spend time to book a call with us. So essentially from here is if that budget conditions are met, they can go in, book a discovery call, and then the form will be submitted. Otherwise, the form will just be submitted. And then we're going to set up the workflow to send an additional email. So I can hit X here. We can go into integrate and you can see the Google calendar has already been set up for us. We actually want to go into the workflows here. As I mentioned before, there is some options that are already pre-built for us. I'm going to go in here and click blank workflow. And in this case, as I also mentioned, the form abandoned, this is an add on, but these other options are available within the free plan. So in this case, I'm actually going to do when the form is submitted, we're going to go down to the next step, which is going to be an AI action. Click AI action. We're going to do summarize text. That is fine. And we will do medium. There's an option here to go custom. If you only want to summarize or extract from one specific field, you have that functionality as well but we'll go full submission. We'll do medium and I will hit done. The next step, I want to go into Slack and I want to send a message to my leads channel in Slack. And it's going to be a custom message. I'm just going to do something like name. We will do email company and description or summary. Maybe we'll do summary here. Then again, just hit the at symbol or you can hit the plus icon. We'll go up here. We'll do full name, email company. And we'll add in the summary, which is being created by the AI module. We'll hit done here. And now we can go on to the next step. Now, next step, we're going to add in a filter and the filter is simply going to be if the budget is equal to not sure, or is equal to the 1500 to 5,000. And this would be a use case where I would want to create some sort of branch if the budget does not meet your threshold. For example, if it's under $1,500, maybe it sends an automated email saying something like, sorry, you don't qualify. Or it could be like, we provide hourly services. If you would like to book an hourly service and you could direct them to pay for that hourly consult ahead of time using the form, as I previously mentioned, something along those lines, but the branching option is not yet available. I'm just going to continue as is. So again, it's just going to be when the budget is equal to either not sure or the 1500 to 5,000 range. Either way, in this case, even if it is at the 1500 range or under the 1500 range, you are still going to get a notification in Slack so you can reach out to them manually or connect with another service like relay.app and send out additional email away for the time being. Here, I'm gonna add in a delay Maybe I don't want them to receive the email immediately after sending out the form, but within just five or 10 minutes, something along those lines. We can go in here on delay, put in 10 minutes, and then after 10 minutes, it will send out an email to this form submitters that meet that specific condition or filter. Next step, I'm going to hit this plus icon again. We'll go to send email and you actually have the option to connect your own Gmail address. I'm just going to leave it as from fill out for now, I'll leave. Thank you for your submission. I'm going to pass in the email address they provide and I can hit advanced. If you want, you can add an attachment. You can CC different people, BCC yourself, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll go into email here and I'm just going to paste in an email that I've already pre-created. We can do hi, full name. Thanks for contacting us. Our projects generally start at three or 500 and increase accordingly dependent on project needs, whatever you want it to say. So I can go back into here, hit done. And now our workflow is complete. Best practice. It's good to 
label your workflow or automation or whatever you're creating. I've labeled it client inquiry workflow. And from here, I can actually go in and hit publish. I will publish it and it is now live. If I hit back, close this out, we can see that the integrations, we have a Google calendar connection and we have a workflow set up on this specific form. So share, we have options available here. Once we publish the form, here's our results page. And then here's settings. There's nothing else that I need to do on this specific form. If it's ready, you can actually go in and hit publish and you can share it any way you want. There's embed options that are available, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the preview option. Other thing I'm going to do is go into the workflow and remove this delay because I want the email to be sent automatically so I can display what it looks like. Here's the form. We have our logic set up. Now we can give it a test. I'll go preview. I'll just add in some example information, company name, and I'm not going to worry about a phone number. I'll just click next. What's the budget for the project? I am going to put 5,000 to 10,000, and I'm just going to paste in an example description that I've already pre-written. We'll hit next, gives us an option to review, then I can hit submit. And from here I can schedule call. I can go in here and select whatever time and book it similar to a Calendly booking. One other thing that we can do, there was that pre-fill option and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but because the users already passed us their name and their email address, instead of them entering it twice, we can add this information for them. So I'm going to exit the preview. I will go down to the discovery call and I will do advanced and we're going to pre-fill some fields here. So the respondent email, that's just going to be email address and the respondent name is just going to be full name. We can go back into preview. I'll just write this out real quickly. We can book a time. It's pre-filled the information here for us. I'm not actually going to go through and schedule this. I want to go the other route so that we can see how the workflow actually works here. So in this case, I'm going to use either the not sure or the 1500 to 5,000, which will meet the filter within our workflow. And I'll click next, we can review it and hit submit. And we can see it automatically takes us to the end. And within a few moments, I should receive a Slack message internally and the customer, which in this case is just my email address will also receive an email. So we can see that I received a Slack notification passing in the customer name or the lead name, email company name. And then it provides me with a summary created by AI of the form submission. Once you submit the form, you can actually go in to the history here and select to see the workflow history. We can see that there's a form submitted, AI action, Slack, filter, and then send email. And if I go into my email, we can see here that subject as we entered it, thank you for your submission, and it will automatically send out this email for us. There's a lot you can do here with the new workflows feature within Fillout. It's really exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing how they add to it and the new features that get added as they build it out and bring it out of beta. It's really exciting stuff. Make sure you check it out. It is really coming along quite nicely, the whole fill out platform, and it is going to be a leader before long within the form space. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified of more tutorials in the future.